What kind of demand is there for meatless food for one's dog? Yeah, so it's a really interesting. So we've been trying to project that out, where it can go. Um, if we look at the plant-based dairy market, we're looking at about 15% of the current market in dairy is uh, plant-based. So if we look at the current market, that's about a $4.5 billion market in pet food. But 15% is because people have intolerances. Uh, well, can you really get that big? I, I, don't, I don't know if that's totally the case, actually, because there, there are plenty of people that drink plant-based milks as opposed to, you know, just based on flavor. Right, coconut, oat, all different types of flavors. Um, with Wild Earth, we're really focusing on one really important thing, which is bringing clean protein to the marketplace. So we've just launched our clean protein, um, high protein plant-based line at wildearth.com. Um, it's actually uh, available online now. Mm -hmm. um, and we're focused on removing the, uh, the four Ds. I don't know if you're familiar with the four Ds. Uh, these are basically diseased animals that, can, that are not suitable for human food that are put into the food chain of pets. Are there regulators who look at mm. pet food and what goes there into are. it? There are, so the FDA regulates and so does this regulatory body called AFCO as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they look at what goes in. Uh, Non-human grade meat is allowed to go into pets food. And so, so that's pretty significant. So, okay, my question is, don't dogs need meat? Because if you're <laughs> raising a little puppy, and that was an awfully cute one, yeah. uh, you want them to grow and, and you want to give them the best food available. And a lot of times, anything alternative that hasn't, doesn't have a proven track yeah. record yeah. might be kind of questionable. You don't want to take that risk. Yeah, so all of our ingredients are approved by AFCO and the FDA. So they're all approved. Dogs need protein, whether it comes from plants, animal protein sources, or fungi sources. Mm. And so as long as you have the right amino acids which make up proteins, that's how you can actually make a high quality clean protein. Okay, I just can't resist that. That's, that's too cute. It's kind of cute. Right? Um, marketing obviously a big focus for you right now yeah. because you want to get your name, you want to get your concept out there. Sure. And you and your chief veterinary officer starred in a commercial yes. for your food <laughs> recently. Yeah. And if we can show that right now because it's, it definitely catches your attention. Here you are. Are you actually eating the dog food there? I, I am. I think I ate about uh, three days worth of dog food in that city. How many takes did you do? Uh, like 10 takes. Wow. How many bowlfuls? Yeah, so I, I, had, uh, I had a six cups. So I think that's <laughs> three days worth of dog food that I basically ate. You must have been pretty full. Does yeah. it actually taste nice? Yeah, it, it tastes like crackers, you know, kind of dry crackers. <laughs> Not super flavorful, flavorful for humans. Um, I think, you know, the main point in that was just to show which other dog food CEO is willing to eat their own dog yeah. food. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. And, and this is the point that I wanted to make. Clean protein matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and so many of our pet parents that have actually started to buy our product, uh, our products actually are really excited about the fact that it's clean. Well, how, you, you say already on the shelves, already being purchased, yeah. how global do you go? Where is demand going to come from if it's not just the US? So the US market is massive already. We're seeing massive growth actually in China, interesting enough. So China mm -hmm. uh, has recently grown about 20% year on year. Uh, from about a $3 billion base. So we see massive growth opportunities in China and Latin America as well. So we really view this as a global opportunity. You've invested in biotech startups for years, right? Uh, um, yes. You've advised high growth food and biotech companies. Mm -hmm. How long have people been looking at the pet food space, the mm. pet care space as the area t that, that could see a lot of growth and a lot of demand? Only recently. Why is that? Um, you know, I, I think that most investors kind of didn't view it as a significant market up until recently. I know I've, I've talked to lots of investors both in New York and in Silicon Valley, um, and they just didn't see the, the growth that was happening in the pet food industry. They, they didn't really recognize it as an opportunity for innovation. Um, but we do. We see clean protein, everything from plant-based sources all the way through to clean meat. And certainly it's captured the investor base's mm -hmm. attention because of the phenomenal initial share sale of Beyond Meat. Sure. Are you talking to people like Impossible Foods, Beyond Meat? Are you thinking of partnerships? Where does that go? For sure. So, so we're always open to talking with Beyond Meat and Impossible. I know both Ethan Brown and uh, Pat Brown, two Browns, uh, <laughs> who run both, both of those companies. They're great people. I like them a lot. Um, we haven't talked about any partnerships, but always open to talk.